It's another heart wrenching case in our missing in Houston series, but this time the surge stretches far beyond Houston. The family of 36 year old former Marine Guan Merlos, also known as John, is seeking answers after his sudden disappearance from cut and shoot back in August. Joining us now is digital content producer Holly Gavin, who has the details on this case and in an interview with Guan's sister Jackie. Thanks, Rochelle. Thank you. This week we're covering we're covering a story that's heartbreaking and urgent. Juan's family is still mourning the loss of his younger sister and is now facing another disaster, another devastating loss. I'm joined now by Jackie's, by Juan's sister, Jackie, who will share more about his disappearance and what the family is doing to bring him home. Jackie, can you walk me through Juan's disappearance? So <clears throat> Juan was um, in August, uh, he was working with my uncle and my uncle, he, he was very flexible with Juan's um, schedule because he had, he was very um, understanding of his mental, um, he had PTSD, so some days Juan wouldn't be mentally good to go to work, so some days he would be very flexible. So he was working with him and he switched out his work truck um, the, the morning of his disappearance and was first, we don't know why he went on I-10, um, but he did. He just started to drive. But Juan wasn't doing okay. Um, he was not doing okay after the loss of my sister. He was really um, struggling mentally. On top of his PTSD after serving in the Marine Corps, he was always um, struggling with depression and anxiety. So after my sister's loss, it's just, I would feel like there was a break, like he just drove. The last known location um, was, um, Anthony, Texas, Anthony, New Mexico area. And that's the last place we saw, anybody saw him, like the worker at the Loves saw him at, at Anthony, Texas. Um, there was also a, sh uh, a screenshot of his truck on the license plate reader and it had his photo driving, so. Can you tell me a little bit more about Juan and what he's like as a person? Juan is really loving, especially to animals. Um, he really loves dogs. Um, he's a very gentle guy. He took care of all five of us, well, four of us under him, while my mom would work when we were little. So he was like basically like a dad. He was very authoritative, hey, don't do this. And he, was, he always took care of all of us. Um, so he never had kids of his own because he felt like we were his kids. That's, he was a loving guy, he was. Um, but sometimes he was serious, so <laughs> very serious. So we wouldn't, you know, like a dad almost. So. But other than that, um, his birthday is in two days. Um, October 30th is his birthday. So it's really hitting my mom really hard. My, mo my mom drives out there all the time to look for him 12 hours. It's a 12 hour drive and she drives out there just to look for him in Segovia. He goes, she goes to Segovia every single junction and then she goes to New Mexico and she just looks for him everywhere. She talks to authorities. Um, we call the coroner's office all the time just in case if he isn't with us, we could put him to rest. We just don't know where he's at. What would you want people to know about Juan's struggles and strengths as a veteran with PTSD? Well, honestly, Juan never was able to get the health care he needed through the VA. He never was supported as much as we thought he would be. Um, we really, that's why he kind of gave up on trying to get help. So he tried to take it upon himself. And that's why I feel like he had a mental break because he didn't never receive the care he needed from the VA. Even when I called the VA for help, they just told me that they were going to pay for his funeral, reimburse me if I ever found him. I'm so sorry. And is this typical behavior for Juan? Has he ever disappeared like this before? Mm, no, Juan, um, Juan was happy to come home. Um, he was in California for a long time because that's where he served and he was in that Camp Pendleton over there and he just, and he got married. So after he was married um, and he, you know, he got a divorce and he came back home to mama. You know, he always talked to my mom. If he had anything, he always talked to my mom, especially on her birthday. And her birthday was October 12th. So she waited for that phone call all day. Is there any message you'd like to give if maybe Juan's out there watching or anyone out there has any information about his disappearance? 
Well, if anybody has any information, please, um, if you'll contact me or even the authorities, if you don't even want to contact us, um, just so we could know he's okay. And Juan, if you're watching, please know that we love you and we really miss you and we, and we understand. And we're all going through it together. And we want to be there for you. I'm sorry. No, you're, you're fine. How can the community best support you, you and your family going through this? Um, to keep on the lookout for his truck. Um, his truck hasn't been found, so, and his license plates are on there. Um, report any guy that looks like him. Any, anybody that knows of anything that happens to him, even if you want to be anonymous, you won't get in trouble, just, just give an anonymous tip. If you know something happened to him, please let us know. And you don't have to even give yourself up. 